Technology should support classroom learning. And in this video, I want to show you some tips to optimize Google Classroom for your students so that you can spend less time signing in and getting access and more time on actual learning activities. Now, some of these things you'll be able to do on your own. Others will require support and help from your district IT department or administration. Now the first tip is very simple and everyone can do this. If you go into any Google product, YouTube, Gmail, Calendar, Drive, even Google Classroom, if you look in the top right corner of your screen, you're going to see what I call the Google Waffle. By clicking on that waffle, it will show you all the various Google products that you have access to, including Google Classroom. And this is probably the easiest, most reliable way for a student to switch between the different Google services that they have access to. Now here's a little bonus tip for you. You are able to customize the order of those icons. Just grab one and drag it where you'd like it to appear. I recommend dragging the classroom app, moving it further up so that it's easier for you to access. Another way to access Google Classroom is through the Chrome Web App. Now this is really only going to apply if you're using Chromebooks to access Google Classroom. Chrome Web Apps provide a simple way to access various services and products. Now, the reality is that these apps are really nothing more than fancy web links uh, to the product you're clicking on. It's not going to give you any additional features or functions. It's just going to make it easier to get into Google Classroom. To install the app, you're just going to go to the Chrome Web Store. Very easy to access on your Chromebook. And search for Google Classroom. This is uh, the app that uh, you'll see and uh, you have your students or yourself install them. Now, depending on how your district handles Chrome apps, you may, may not be able to install it on your own. If the classroom app has not been approved, your students may not be able to, to add it themselves. Your IT director does have the ability to push that app out to all student Chromebooks so that it just appears and students won't, don't have to do anything. I would recommend that. I think that's a great idea. Now, once the Chrome app is in installed on the device, you can also go ahead and pin that app to your Chromebook shelf. So the shelf is that black bar that appears at the bottom of your screens where you sign out, you know, connect to Wi-Fi, etc. But you can pin various apps uh, down there so that they're just immediately available. This is really helpful for elementary classrooms especially because if your students are signed in you just say look for the, the chalkboard, click on the chalkboard and that takes them right into Google Classroom without having to type anything in. Only your IT director will be able to pin those apps to the shelf. A third option is to bookmark Google Classroom. This is something that you can do on your own if you uh, feel it would be helpful. Just have your students visit Google Classroom one time and then click the little star icon at the end of the URL bar and that will add a, um, an icon, a link to Google Classroom. Uh, for easy access. This again is something that your IT department can do automatically for you as well. They are able to push those bookmarks to student devices so that Google Classroom would just appear up at the top of the screen. This um, idea here will require um, some help from your IT department, but it is possible on a Chromebook to automatically load a set or collection of pages when a student signs into the Chromebook. Um, this is very handy, especially at the elementary level. So student logs in and immediately whatever three, four, five pages the district selects will load without having them to type anything in. This could be your district website, a student start page, Google Classroom, Google Drive. Uh, it's totally up to you. It's nice because it's standard. You know that as soon as they sign in, um, those pages will be ready to go. This will require um, assistance from your IT department in order to set that up. Since we're talking about start pages, obviously you can load Google Classroom, but you might want to take that even a step further and think about what are all of the various resources that students need to access on a regular basis. You might want to get get together with your grade level or even your building um, colleagues and uh, put together a student start page. You could use Google Sites, Weebly, um, 
You could use a Google document to do this. And all this site is, is a list of all of the various web pages and tools on one place that would automatically load when a student logs in to give them quick and easy access um, to that, uh, those, those sites. Here's an example of a Symbaloo page, which is um, very popular at the elementary level. It's just a series of cards, little tiles, and students would click on each of them to access. Really doesn't require a lot of effort to set this up. And once you've got it ready to go, um, you can change it as necessary. Here's a little more detailed example. I like this one. So this one actually has um, links directly into each teacher's class web page. Um, this is a little bit older. I would certainly add a link to Google Classroom on here as well. But this kind of extends that idea, not just optimizing for Google Classroom, but to other um, important things as well. Those are a few tips for optimizing Google Classroom for your students so that you can spend more time learning and less time clicking around.